Alright, welcome to part three. And now let's get right back. Uh so yeah, we created the random two integer. And now we have to set our second label to the random two. Whatever was generated. So second label set text. And then remember you gotta put a blank string and it'll throw you an error and then put ran two. Just like that. Now whatever was generated here is gonna pop up in our random two label. Alright? Now we're gonna have a nested if statement, which means an if statement inside of an if statement. So um if ran two was greater than the first ran and they picked um uh they picked higher well, then what does that mean? Well let's see. So let's think about this. They picked the random two was higher than the first random. And they picked higher. That means they guessed correctly. Because the second one was higher than the first one. So they and they clicked higher for the first one. And this one was higher. So they picked um Yeah, they chose correctly. So um we'll do win or lose set text right two more so that means they have to guess two more right in order to win because remember they have to guess um, I think three total so if they've got this one that means they already got one so they just need two more um, now I'll finish with this um, statement so else if um, ran two is less than first ran and they picked um, they picked higher. <coughs> what does this mean? Well, that means they didn't get it because the second one was smaller, but they had picked higher, but it's actually lower. So that means they lost. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say win or or lose set text, and then we're just gonna say you lost. Sorry, but you lost. All right. And then what else do we wanna do? Well, we want to make it so they can't play anymore. So, Java has a unique, nice little feature, and basically, what this allows us to do is disable our higher and lower buttons so they can't guess anymore, which causes, forces them to click the restart button so they can't um, keep playing even if they guess wrong. So, lower, set, enabled, and put false. Same with higher. So, we're not we're setting enable false, which means we're making it so the button is just I th basically just it's outlined and you can't click it, you can't do anything with it, it's just there. It's pretty cool. So else if um random two was greater than first ran and they picked um oh Jesus e equals um they pick they just happen to pick a lower Make sure you spell if you had it all in caps, you gotta put it in all caps or you have to have it already spelled it up in these text strings right here, just so you know. And then um so they did this. That means the second one was bigger, but they picked lower. That means they lost. So win or or lose set text um you lost. And let's give this one a little exclamation point. And then same thing, just um I'm just gonna copy and paste this because it saves a little time. Um, disable those buttons so they can't play any longer. So now we only have one more condition and that is if the random two is less than the first random and they've clicked lower that means they won. So else if random two is less than first rand and they picked lower well then they were right so um, lower. Ugh. Alright. They got it. So, win or lose set text. Right. Huh. Two more. Perfect. Just like that. And don't disable the buttons because they want to keep playing because they won. So. And now go outside of this if statement right here. And then we want to set the round equal to two because they've completed the first round successfully. And now because our if statement relies on this round 
and um, and to kind of see where they're at. So round is equal to two. Remember, if they don't get here, it's not going to get set to two. It's just going to like stop and it's going to disable the button, so they can't do anything. And all I have to do is press restart. And in my restart method, I set the round back to one, just in case you're wondering how it's going to work. All right, so now go back to our main if statement. Remember, this is our nested if statements right here. So else if round is equal to two, which it is right now, if they made it pass, so now they're on the second round. Um, we're gonna generate a third random number, and that's gonna be called rand three. That's gonna be int math dot random, and it's gonna be by twenty plus one. Uh, make sure it is All right. And then just set the third label to whatever that number was. So. Alright, got that. And now, I'm pretty lazy, so I'm just going to copy this and just change a couple things. Because I've already explained the, all the logic behind it, so now all I do is change the numbers. So It's not RAN2 anymore, it's RAN3. It's not first RAN, it's RAN2. So now RAN3 is higher than RAN2, and they picked higher. Well, they won. And same thing here, so 3 and RAN2. I don't know why I just didn't call it random one. I don't know why I called it first rand, but whatever. And you lost. Um, false, false. Rand three. Rand two. Uh, this is odd. You lost, you lose. And yeah, make those the same. Alright, and same thing here. Um, rand three and rand two. Got that? Alright. Now set the round to 3. So if they made it this far, then the round is up to 3. And then what do you think is going to go here? Well, yeah, it's going to be another else if. So now if round is equal to 3. So if they made it all the way to the last one, now this is what we're going to do. So we're going to generate another random number. And it's going to be the rand 4. And that's going to be a int. And math dot random by twenty plus one. And but why we do plus one is what's wrong here? Hmm. Rand four is equal to int math dot random by twenty plus one. Okay, well, that was weird. Um, why we do this plus 1 is because we don't want it to be 0 through 19, we want it to be 1 through 20. Because nobody's going to logically think, nobody's going to logically put in a 0, they're just going to put in a 1. It just makes it um, better. So, and then set the fourth label. So, fourth label, and then set the text. You should know that. And then, uh, blank string, and plus uh, rand 4. Alright? Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Now, since we're lazy and we're trying to be time efficient, we copy this again. Actually, that was a bad one to copy. Copy this one because I've changed the rand. I mean, I've changed the first rand to like. Yeah, you'll see. So, rand four and three. So basically, just take the higher one and just just take each rand and put it up one. So rand four, three, four, three, four. 3. Alright, and now we don't want to set the round back because we don't want it to go back to the 1 because we just want them to, we want to force them to go to file restart because we don't want to like let them win and then just set it back again. I mean, I don't know, it'd be kind of dumb. Oh, and I forgot to fix this. It's write 1 more for the, the round 2, write 1 more because now we only have 1 more to do. And now, if we're in the third round and we've won everything, that means, well, you won. So, you won the game. And same for this. You won the game. Alright. So, after all that, let's see here. Yep, after all that, we're finally done with the whole action performed thing, so I'm going to end it here and go to the next video.